Without any further ado, it's a pleasure to welcome the Principal Advisor for Urban Design for the City Council. Please welcome Hugh Nicholson. Good morning, everybody. That's, um, the mic's working OK? Yeah. Look, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, one of the things I was going to start out um, talking about is um, Is that mic working now? No? You can, hear, you can hear now? Sorry, I'm not using that mic. I'm using a lapel microphone. If you can't hear me, can the people at the back hear me? There's, yeah, there's some fingers up, so I think I'll, I'll, I'll continue now. That's not necessarily a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Bob. <laughs> Look, um, we put this exhibition on in a month, and I could, did want to congratulate the, the communications team at the council and, the, and a number of um, people who've helped us um, put the show together. Look, usually something like this takes four months, six months to prepare, to do the, um, you know, to get the, the, the graphics prepared, to do the arrangements, to book the venue. So look, um, the team who put this together have been running, you know, for the last month, they've been running as fast as they can, and I really think they've done a fantastic job. Um, and if you, you know, if you put your hands together for them, please, it would be tremendous. <laughs> I'm not quite sure how that started out. It wasn't supposed to start out straight away, but we'll keep on rolling. So look, um, <clears throat> what I wanted to do, I guess, is to, um, is to talk a little bit about um, my um, emotional reaction to, to walking through the red zone. So look, I'm sure you've all heard a lot of figures from the paper, you know, talk of 900 buildings being demolished. Um, but in a way, um, until you, you know, when you experience it, it is a shocking experience. Now, obviously, the most tragic and the most um, distressing um, part of the, of the earthquake, the most traumatic, have been the people who um, have lost friends and family killed in the, uh, during the quake. But I think for those of us who are fortunate enough to have been spared that, um, there's still some grieving that we'll um, have to do. And certainly um, you know, my experience of walking through the red zone was one where, where it was a sho was shocking one. At the end of it, you know, for the rest of the day, I was quite, um, um, uh, you know, I was, I was in shock for the rest of that day. And I guess I wanted to share that with you and talk a little bit about, um, you know, the kind of um, things that, we, um, that, I, that I saw and, and, the, and the responses that I had. Now, in a way, the, the kind of the worst thing I found was actually the lack of people. Um, you get it, when I went in there, you know, there are no people there. There's all the signs, the usual signs of human occupation. There are tables and chairs, there are cups, there are, um, you know, the, the fronts of buildings have come off and you kind of, you, you look in and, and you can see the, 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 the shops, you know, the, the goods often when I was there. But, and yet there were no people. It was kind of like one of those, um, it's a little bit like a, you know, a science fiction movie, one of those awful movies where all the people are sucked up you know, in a vacuum cleaner and you're just deserted. And the only sound, the only kind of you know, sound is the sound of birds singing and perhaps a truck working in the distance. You know, and that, in a way, you know, summed up for me the, 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 um, the, the awfulness of this event. When we think of cities, we think of buildings, we think of streets, we think of great squares and things, but actually it's the people who make them up. So the ruins are, you know, there, there are ruins all around you, but it's the lack of people in a way which I found the most disturbing thing about, um, about walking through there. Now, look, it'd be great to be able to take, you know, people through the, the, the central city and for them to experience what it's like. But I have to say, having walked through there, it is incredibly obvious there are dangerous buildings, you know, there are, you know, there are walls teetering all around you, and there really is no way, and, and premises are just, you know, are, are open. Um, there just is no way we can just allow people in just to walk through the city and, and you know, the risk is, is too great. I think the other thing is, you know, we show you these pictures and, um, and they kind of give you a, a kind of a little sense of what it's like. But when you're in there, it's all around you. It's all on each, you know, it's below your feet, it's above your head, it's on all sides, you know, you, you're walking through dust. Um, it is a kind of real sense around experience. And there is a lot of it. 
I mean, you know, much as I you know would like to tell you otherwise, you know, the, the feeling as you walk through that that central red zone is is that all around you there are broken buildings and things. And while you know we don't know the future of those yet, there will be have to be discussions, you know, with Sarah, with the insurers, with the landowners. You know, there's obviously a huge amount of damage. Now, on one level, you know, I think, um, I don't know about you, but certainly for me, I'm over my love affair with bricks. You know, I had a beautiful 1920s brick house in, in, um, in, in, in Murray Ainsley, which has now collapsed. <laughs> and, and I think we've seen so many images of the, you know, of the, of the masonry buildings which have, you know, fallen over that actually, you know, I think, I feel, um, unless I can see the steel reinforcing in those buildings, personally, you know, I, I, I can kind of, I kind of, I'm, well, I'm over bricks. <laughs> um, but um, perhaps, you know, some of the un really unsettling things. Sorry, I'm just trying to change the PowerPoint and get it going. Can we um, move in on to the next slide now? So I guess these are just some of the images of some of the brick buildings in the, in the, in the central city, which you will have seen a, a lot of, and they obviously suffered, you know, greatly in the, um, in the, in the quake. Do I need to point this somewhere to, to change the slides? Thank, thank you. But look, um, one of the really unsettling things when you look around the city, you walk down the street, um, and it's quite hard to show in photographs, but um, when, you, when you're actually in the street, you know, our eyes are quite a, a, you know, accustomed to picking up vertical lines and when things aren't lined up. And if you look at this, um, this particular um, image, you'll see, um, you'll see that these buildings, these buildings are not, they're not aligned. One of, them, one of them's leaning. Well, actually, both of them are leaning. You know, and they're leaning in opposite directions. And you know, that's quite, a, it's quite an unsettling kind of feeling when you go in there and these are big buildings and, and they're, you know, they've obviously tilted during, during, the, um, during the quake. Um, now again, this is you know, a big challenge for engineers. You know, some of them will have to be demolished where the damage is very bad. Some of them may be able to, you know, they're investigating ways of straightening some of them up. But um, you know, whether people will want to go back into them is, you know, is quite another question. Um, and probably for me, even more uncomfortable is, you know, you, you know, I was walking around, I was delighted to see this building apparently unscathed. So this is the SPS building, I think it's designed by Peter Bevan. And um, it looks perfect on the outside. And the structural engineer who was with me just, you know, she looked at me and, and she just looked. She said, inside there's significant structural damage. Now, you know, she couldn't say whether it will be demolished or not. But, you know, certainly it's, um, you know, although for all intents and purposes this looks fine on the outside, on the inside the damage is, you know, is substantial. Um, so, again, there's a kind of a discomfort, you know. And similarly with the Brannigan's building we see on the corner there, you can see that they're breaking glass out there, but I understand. Sorry, we'll, we'll speak up. Have we got it? My apologies. Can you hear that? Can you hear that now? Hang on. We'll just see if we can change to the other microphone. Can somebody let me know when we can move to the other microphone? Testing, testing. Can you hear that? Okay. Right, sorry about that. The joys of modern technology. So look, yeah, this is the, the Brannigan's building here. Again, you know, is, you know, one of a, one of our one, you know a very prominent corner. Again, has suffered reasonably um, significant damage. The Copthorne Hotel on um, on Durham Street, a lot of you will have heard about, um, is, um, you know, is, has been damaged and, and and will come down. Now look, these um these photos, and I'm glad to say I didn't have to go into the building and take these photos, but. Um, this gives you some indication of what you know, some of our search and rescue people were doing you know, afterwards. This is the temporary stabilisation in the basement car park. And you see those sort of drums sort of in the middle. They've been placed around the damaged pillars and they've pumped concrete in to, to stabilise the building temporarily. So you know, I think we really take our hats off to the people who risk their lives to do that. These are the stairs out of the um, Forsyth Bar building. So you number would be aware that the stairway, the stairwell's collapsed. This is where they're lying in a car park outside. And again, another image looking up the stairwell. Again, glad it wasn't me you had to take that. Um, but um, and and finally, in the the Grand Chancellor, I mean, I know uh, you know there's been a lot of talk about that. 
But when you see the level of damage there, and again, this is, this is from the outside, I mean, I've only been on the, um, on the upwind side, the side that's, you know, <laughs> it's leaning in one direction. I've been, uh, been on the other side of it. Um, and, um, and that's, you know, frightening enough for me. But um, you can just see the extent of damage. Again, this was taken by the USAR teams when they were clearing the building out, the sort of damage inside. So, um, and I, you know, and I guess whereas we kind of expect that for brick and masonry buildings, you know, for modern buildings, it's kind of unsettling. Um, this is the new press building. I don't think anybody had moved in at this stage. The structure, as I understand it, is okay. But um, you can see the broken, you know, the broken windows. The DTZ building on Cashel Moor. And again, I'm afraid I think the damage is a bit more than just the one window, one broken window. But um, I guess, um, and I think I probably should stress at this point that you know, although these these modern buildings, you know, have been badly damaged, I think we need to remember that the the forces generated by this earthquake and you know were, were substantially in excess of the forces which our design codes are intended to be able to withstand. So the figures I understand are in the order of 1.4 to 1.8 times greater than the, the forces designed for on the design code. Now when you, when, you, so when you think about it like that, I mean perhaps the, the question for the Royal Commission is not only why buildings collapsed, but how why so many survived. You know, our buildings are designed for a certain kind of strength of quake, and this quake was much stronger. So, um, you know, I think um, the fact that we see this level of damage is not at all to be, um, you, know, it is, you know, it's not a surprise. The other really unsettling thing for me was the loss of, of, of landmarks, the buildings that I love, the buildings that punctuated my, um, the buildings that punctu, there's a noisy crowd down the back, I hope they can hear now. <laughs> um, the buildings that punctuated my, um, you know, my life, my everyday life. Can you hear that? And, um, and particularly the ANZ building, for example, this is on High Street. So it's a beautiful, it was a beautiful flat iron building with a red dome. You can see it in the bottom, you know, right hand corner. And, um, you know, gone, just, just disappeared. Um, you know, the, the, the Fisher building on, again, on High Street, another flat iron building. You know, these are the things, the buildings that I love to look at every day. Um, you know, the provincial chambers. The press building, one of our most beautiful buildings. I was delighted to see the old government life building next door is actually looking good at the moment. So it's one of the few, you know, one of the few bright points in the, in the central city. Um, you know, the, 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 the list goes on. We've seen, all seen images of the cathedral. Um, the clock on the old post office stopped at the time of the earthquake. This is my barber's shop, you know, on a very personal level, you know, you've kind of, you've lost the kind of landmarks and the places you go to all the time. I used to go and get my hair cut there. You buy shoes, this is Suckling Shoes on, on High Street, um, you yeah, know, looking straight inside. Wickles, you know, where you buy shops. It was a pleasure to see Scorpio reopening just the other day. And, and probably, you know, I, I think there are whole streets that we won't see again. High Street, Manchester Street large parts of Colombo Street just won't be the same anymore. And, and for me, you know, that's a, you know, they're, they're, they're grim, it's a grim thought. They're parts of the city that, um, that I loved. Um, I thought um, finally um, Peaches and Cream had got its logo, its slogan right. <laughs> and uh, I'm sure, you know, some, well, you know, there are corners where you stand and if you couldn't see the Port Hills, you'd wonder where you were. Now, I think you know, we're, this, this, this um, weekend is about looking forward. It's about being positive. But I think a part of that is to, you know, for me anyway, is to grieve for the things we've lost. You know, look, um, a number of, um, of, uh, of, of, of people have said to me, you know, Hugh, you know, isn't this a great opportunity? Aren't you delighted by this? And I have to say my response is, no, look, I'm not really. You know, it's a little bit as though somebody came into your house and they, took all your, they stole all your belongings, including your family heirlooms. In one sense, it's a great opportunity to get a whole lot of new stuff, isn't it? But if you loved your heirlooms, loved the kind of your belongings, it's a kind of, I think you need to be sorry for them, to, to let them go and, um, you, know, as, you know, you need to let them go and grieve for them, and certainly I do.